economic growth, talked about economic development, talked about sustainable development. And it is because of this quest for the world to really be an intergenerational thinking world that led to what we call today the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which were negotiated in 2015 toward 2030. And the whole idea is that all the 17 goals are important targets for countries to constantly uh, keep in mind. The thing that is very interesting about the Sustainable Development Goals, all 17 of them, is that they are of particular importance and, and, and relevance to our continent. Our, our continent is, as of today, the lagging continent. It's a laggard continent. We lag behind all other continents on all, nearly all the metrics of development. And therefore, when you look at the Sustainable Development Goals, they range from Sustainable Development Goal 1 to 17. And they include no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation and infrastructure, reducing inequality, uh, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, uh, climate action, life below water, life on land, uh, peace, justice, and strong institutions, and finally, goal number 17, partnerships for the sustainable development goals. When you look at all of them, you see how relevant they are to our continent. Every one of these goals that uh, encompass the sustainable development goals um, just reflects in the issues and challenges that our continent must conquer. And that's why looking at this topic and saying, what do we go beyond identifying the challenges? What then do we do? How do we even uh, uh, you know, have a conversation that truly we are a challenged continent? Because often, ladies and gentlemen, there are people who are comfortable with mediocrity. And so you can enter into an unnecessary conversation with them where they're telling you that Africa is doing well. But if you're someone like me, who hates the idea that every time you look at indicators that show what it means for countries or continents to do well, we are at the bottom of, the, of those indicators, then you can never agree with anyone who says to you, Africa is doing well. Africa is not doing well. Africa must do well. It's not a case, you know, I, I am not one. I am not one for making politically correct statement. I am known in this country for not making the politically correct statement. I call it as it is. We are not doing well. Because by, by, by every standard of measurement, we are leaving too many of our people behind in poverty. As a matter of fact, I recently said it, that for every one of us who has had anything to do with leadership on our continent, we must feel miserable at the fact that it is 2019, and yet we have children die before they attain the age of five. We have children who die at childbirth. We have mothers who die with high maternal mortality rates. We have a situation where three to uh, about, about uh, nine to eleven million of our young people who had graduate from one level of education or the other and enter the labor market every year, and only about ten percent of them would find anything called decent work. Ladies and gentlemen. It would be inexplicable contradiction for hundreds of millions of people to be bogged down in ignorance and disease in the same world where robots are being proliferated to solve the most complex of human problems. For Africa's leadership, therefore, accepting the important responsibility to lead the effort to solve our challenges is urgent. Ladies and gentlemen, what are the six 
are critical manifestations of Africa's failure. As I said, number one, poverty, joblessness, and inequality. I've already spoken at length on that. And so um, I, the, the second one is food insecurity and climate change. Food insecurity and climate change. It is much of a contradiction that the continent where we have more than 50% of available arable land in the world is the same continent where we have the highest concentration of stunted children. Children who suffer from stunting. And you know, to, to be stunted is to damn any prospects of capacity to learn. And so, with stunted children, we fall behind in terms of educational attainment of the majority of our children. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, food insecurity on this continent is totally unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. Today, Africa spends more of its resources on recurrent costs of running government. Yes. And so does not have sufficient investment for uh, sufficient resources to invest in capital accumulation. We must turn that around. Our budget system is not enabling us to get value for money. And a lot of our politicians enter into politics in order to be traders to buy and sell. The only thing that makes them wake up when they are asleep is when they hear the word contract. There are contemporaries in other countries that have done well. Ministers don't waste their time discussing contracts. They spend their time thinking of vision. They think of strategy, they think of policy, and they think of execution. They don't, they, it's infra -dig for a minister to sit in the contract or discussing what. And by the way, I am telling you what I modeled as a minister. Nobody, nobody that had anything to do with my ministry had the effort to ask for a meeting with me because they knew they, they would be summarily asked to leave my office. That's not my business. There are systems that are in place to handle transactions the role of a minister, the role of a leader, should have nothing to do with transactions. I see your note, and I will be closing on you. you know, the no trans transaction-minded leadership is the worst thing that happened to the political systems of our society. You have people sweating seriously because they are busy looking for contract opportunities. And there's nothing productive about office, in the public life, that is such a waste. It's a waste of leadership for it to be that leadership is reduced to the lowest common denominator. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say to you that if we can invest well in the things that matter for improved opportunity for our citizens, our citizens will be the ones that will lead the process of development on our continent. Because it has been proven that countries can reduce poverty within a matter of three decades. All we need to do is to look at the miracle of China. China invested in human development of its citizens. And in less than 30 decades, in less than three decades, China has been able to lift more than 800 million people out of poverty. Now, that is at least four-fifths of our population in sub-Saharan Africa. So let me end on this note, ladies and gentlemen. What is it that is the most, <laughs> what is it that is the most important thing for Africa's future? in order that we can turn around what, uh, what we've listened to into a different story. Number one is we must, we must, we must determine frankly and squarely 
what economic philosophy we believe in and our structural economic transformation agenda. We must determine, must determine our economic philosophy and the structural economic transformation agenda that we will pursue. When the vice president, the former vice president talked about Africa 2063, that is beginning to have that conversation, but there is much more to be had in unifying the ideals of what it means to have an African economy. Our regional economic integration philosophy has to go beyond political aspiration of individuals. It has to become a concept completely and entirely owned by the citizens of the respective countries in Africa with a complete consensus on what economic philosophy we seek to pursue. Number two is we must build capable states and institutions that are founded on the rule of law. And the interesting thing about that is that it takes the citizens finally saying enough is enough for there to be the demand side of good governance, which is what makes up for a capable state. There can never be a capable state when citizens are comfortable with a fair state. <laughs> <laughs>